Good evening, Red Bull. Uh, this campus meant uh, a lot to me and, and to my family. We've been coming for over 20 years. And, it's, and uh, thank you. And it's been a bit of a sanctuary for me and for my family. And, uh, and I just uh, want to acknowledge that. Uh, we're going to read you a story uh, that actually uh, it talks a little bit about uh, some Russian lore, and it has some relevance to Red Pine, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Hi, my, uh, my name is Andrew. And my name is Sarah. This is a Russian fable with uh, uh, Red Pine Camp Roots, which we would like to dedicate to Barbara Lucas. Barbara, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. All right, Barbara, this is dedicated to you. Um, and it's called Siberian Cedar Medallion. Once upon a time, a young man uh, named Andrew, a member of senior staff, family programming, at a Red Pine Camp and a PhD in physics from the Perimeter Institute at Waterloo University, sat in a Muskoka chair on a bluff overlooking Golden Lake, uh, talking with camp coordinator Sarah. Sarah asks Andrew to tell her a story about the Siberian uh, cedar medallion that he always wears around his neck. And the reason why Sarah feels that this story could be important is that Barbara, handicraft god at RPC, um, wants to introduce a new handicraft to the camp and a new tradition too. So this is a story that Andrew told her. Uh, Russian entrepreneur Vladimir Begre, Andrew begins, explored the immense expanse of the Siberian taiga. That's a, a big forest in Russia. You've been told of the magical healing powers contained in Siberian cedar, which we would call red pine. He wanted to see this for himself, so he took uh, his steamer up the river off in search of these cedars which were also said to ring. In the middle of nowhere, Megre meets a young woman named Anastasia. Of course, uh, she's very beautiful and mysterious. Of course she's very beautiful. How cliche, Andrew. Don't interrupt. Anastasia says, uh, that she lives by herself in the Siberian taiga. Her home is the forest which provides everything she needs practically effortlessly. But Anastasia would like to have a baby one day. She believes her forest can not only produce food, clothing, shelter, medicines, but also impart knowledge. She is sure that the ringing cedars will educate her kids not only in the ways of the forest, but also teach them reading, writing, arithmetic, even advanced subjects like physics and chemistry. Oh, come on now. How is that even possible, Andrew? You have a PhD in physics. You didn't learn that from a tree. Well, these ringing cedars focus uh, psychic energy, and, and from that they somehow extract knowledge. Hey, this is a Russian fable. It's a fable. Suspend this belief for a few minutes, okay? Hmm. I just can't see how this actually works. Well, Meg Ray obviously wants to have a baby with Anastasia, too. It takes... yeah. It takes... it takes <laughs> Russian... It takes Russian men less than eight seconds to fall in love. Not just Russian men, all men. Anywho, Anastasia waits until the time is right, and then, uh, guys, this is Red Podcast, so it's a censored uh, version. Uh, she comes to him one night uh, in his room in her forest home. The next day, she tells Vladimir she's going to have a baby. Maybe. <laughs> Take her back to Moscow with him. He's thinking, what a delight it will be for him to have this young, beautiful, blonde creature in his life. He instantly decides to dump his old wife and take a new one. Typical guy thinking. Right. Anastasia accompanies him back to the river. At the riverbank, she tells Maigre she will not be going with them, but he's welcome to return one day uh, after the winter to visit her and her new son. Maigre goes back to Moscow. He's a changed man, lurching about, telling anyone who will listen about his magical experiences in the Siberian forest. Of course, no one wants to listen to a crazy guy, and he descends to practically the level of a street person. Now the old wife won't have him in her home. He disgusts her. Ha! Serves him right. So Mike Ray, <laughs> although he has never written a book in his life, decides to write and his first five books all become huge bestsellers in something like 20 different languages. His mysterious and secretive organization, which is typical of crazy Russians, sells these medallions like the one I'm wearing now. 
It's supposed to channel the uh, power of Siberian cedar to heal you, empower you, and bring you knowledge. Hey, says Sarah. The Japanese also have a term of this. They call it forest bathing. And they make a point of taking their young people and old people into the forest for this purpose. Apparently, just the sight of trees together with their smell, it lowers your blood pressure and boosts your immune system. So, um, Andrew, do you think I could get a Siberian uh, medallion? Sure, sir. Uh, but we can get them right here uh, from red pine trees. Oh no! Will that damage RPC trees? Not a chance that campers would ever do that, Sarah. From a single branch, we could get 120 medallions with diameters ranging from about 2 centimeters to about 8. We can ha harvest all that we need. The trees will just keep on growing. So let's channel RPC instead of Siberia, okay? Hey, I've got an idea. Maybe we could stop them at the handicraft hut. <laughs> hey, Andrew, do you have any more stories? I've got a million stories, but right now, let's go to the coffee house. You know what? I heard the Firestones were performing tonight. Poor Rachel got roped in again. <laughs>